एक्सरसाइज गोज ऑन टिल द लास्ट मोमेंट आप मार्केट असर्टन कर रहे हैं या प्राइसिंग पे बात कर रहे हैं या तो कई बार डिले हो जाता है बहुत मुश्किल होता है लास्ट मिनट पे आदमी दौड़ता है कि जाओ रजिस्टर करो सुबह इशू लाना है ये प्रैक्टिकल डिफिकल्टीज को भी अंडरस्टैंड करते हुए नया कंसेप्ट रेड हरिंग प्रोस्पेक्टस का लाया गया जो आप तीन दिन पहले तक रजिस्टर कर सकते हैं तो मेन प्रोस्पेक्टस तो रजिस्टर करना पड़ेगा इशू लाने से पहले पर एटलीस्ट आपने बुकिंग कर ली तो आपका इशू डिले नहीं होने वाला अब आपको ऑलमोस्ट एवरी आस्पेक्ट ऑफ प्रोस्पेक्टस यू हैव सबमिटेड बिफोर द रजिस्ट्रार प्राइसिंग क्वांटम पे जो वर्क चल रहा है उतना फिल इन द ब्लैंक्स करके मेन प्रोस्पेक्टस आपने जाके इशू से पहले सबमिट कर दिया तो जो प्रोस्पेक्टस की स्क्रूटनी वगैरह वो होके सब रेडी है एंड दैट इज वाई द कंसेप्ट ऑफ रेड हरिंग प्रोस्पेक्टस इज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस इज अ क्लियर मूविंग अहेड these various type of prospectus has been introduced and brought but another very important feature which has been brought by 2013 act is private placement under section 42 which was not there in the companies act 1956 private placement is different from prospectus here also you are inviting subscription but not through the path of prospectus you are not issuing prospectus to the market still you are inviting subscription but by a select group of people and that is why it is called private placement so this subscription is not being invited from the public at large you are not bringing that prospectus in the market you are simply issuing letters to the pre identified section of people hmm? and those very people are sent to the proposal please invest into our company and that is where section 42 provides the procedure of private placement as against prospectus Hmm? now there is a liability on issuing a prospectus and the liability about the mis mis statement or misrepresentation in the prospectus is civil as well as criminal So you have to be very careful before issuing a prospectus. You cannot afford to write something which is not true. You have to be very clear and honest in issuing a prospectus. To such an extent that you have to follow the golden rule established in New Brunswick Company's judgment. New Brunswick Company is a leading judgment, which established the doctrine of golden rule. The golden rule is that the officials who are responsible to issue prospectors must openly clarify even the risk factors involved. in the subscription nothing should be hidden absolute honest and transparent and that is where if there is found to be a single misrepresentation or a misstatement in the prospectus section 34 and 35 of the company act 2013 comes into play the they come into play 35 is a civil liability 34 is a criminal liability so in a criminal liability the people the officials the directors who are responsible to bring the prospectus can be prosecuted also and be jailed in addition 35 says there is a civil liability section 35 imposes a civil liability where the person who's been defrauded 
by that misrepresentation can claim damages and compensation from the company. So strict provisions have been made that there shouldn't be any misrepresentation and New Brunswick's doctrine of golden rule must be strictly adhered to. Is that clear? So these are the documents which are required for incorporation of the company. Moving ahead. Once the company is incorporated, a certificate of incorporation is given. Earlier in 1956, even into this 2013 act, it is amended recently. There used to be for a public company a mandate of certificate of commencement of business. Now it is done with. It is deleted. Now it is not no more necessary to have a certificate of commencement of business. Now the company, once receives a certificate of incorporation, can begin its business directly. Right? Once the certificate of incorporation got, the company's documentation is over, company is finally formed, name, address, everything is being prescribed. Within 15 days of the incorporation, you have to submit a registered office for, for future correspondences before the ROC. Everything is done, the next phase begins. And that second phase is called share and share capital, how to finance the company. The shares are predominantly of two kinds, preference shares and equity shares. Preference shares are further classified into mainly three types and opposite three types, so in all six types. Participating preference shares, non-participating preference shares. I said the opposite side also is there, three opposite side, three main sides. So participating preference shares, non-participating preference shares. Cumulative preference shares, non-cumulative preference shares. Redeemable preference shares and irredeemable preference shares. And what are the meaning of these? Participating preference shares is where the preference shareholders are also entitled for a surplus profit and additional dividend after distribution of dividend to equity shareholders. So what happens is, the preference shareholder means who gets preference into two situations. First, if the company is a running concern, a going concern, then the preference shareholders gets preference in payment of dividend before equity shareholders. Once preference shareholders are paid, then only whatever profit is left is distributed among equity shareholders. So the preference during running concern. Secondly, they get preference at the time of winding up of the company. After the company is wound up, the assets are distributed among shareholders. Preference shareholders get first preference. Then equity shareholders. Now, participating preference shares have additional benefit. They get the dividend being paid at a fixed rate first on preference. So a fixed rate of dividend is paid to preference shareholders. Whatever is less, uh, rest is uh, being there, the net profit, that dividend is distributed at the proportion fixed by the resolution of the company among equity shareholders. Despite that, there is a surplus profit left. So if 
after distribution of dividend to equity shareholders, still there is surplus profit left with the company if preference shareholders are having participating preference shareholders, they'll get that surplus dividend also, in addition to their earlier dividend. If it is non-participating, they won't get the second round of dividend. Second classification is cumulative, non-cumulative. Cumulative is, if the preference share is cumulative, and suppose the company does not have a profit in a particular year, could not distribute dividend in that year, this fixed percentage of dividend entitlement to preference shareholders percolates to next year. So next year, he's suppose if there is a profit, he is entitled to get that arrears of dividend as well as this year's dividend, which equity shareholders do not get. Which even preference shareholders, non-cumulative, do not get. So if the preference share is cumulative, then it arrears of dividend adds up to the year finally on which the company has profit to distribute dividend. And third classification is redeemable or irredeemable preference share. Redeemable is where the company can repurchase that preference share. Irredeemable where the company cannot repurchase. Now, irredeemable preference shares are no more valid. There's a fixed term being fixed that a preference share can be redeemed and made redeemable and remain operative only up to 20 years. So after 20 years or within 20 years, the company can redeem. But once 20 years happens, there's no preference left, right? But equity shareholders, is other than preference shares. But the additional feature of equity shareholders, which is different from preference shareholders, is that equity shareholders have a right to vote in every aspect of the company. Whereas preference shareholders can vote only in those areas where the preference shares are going But equity shareholders have a right to participate and vote in every aspect of the company. Now moving ahead, there are certain concepts which are important to be remembered when we are talking about shares. That is, that in the lifetime of a company, Sometimes, the company issues bonus shares to its existing members. If the company has a huge profit and reserves, available to it, the company issues bonus shares to its existing members either free of cost or at a very nominal price. Similarly, the company also issues right shares. What is right shares? Right shares are a kind of right of preemption. That before going into the market, before issuing a prospectus inviting subscription from the market, the company offers the shares to its existing members first. That if you want to take, you take it, otherwise we'll go into the market. That is called rights, Pre right of preemption. That is why it is called right shares. Another feature to be remembered is the policy of buyback. Sometimes, if the company wants to reduce its capital, reduction of capital is a very cumbersome process. It requires permission of the tribunal. But buyback is another kind of reduction of the capital because the company is buying back its share from the market or from the members. 